गुड आफ्टरनून पूनम मैम गुड आफ्टरनून आई आई हैव मेड यू द होस्ट जस्ट सी इफ यू कैन शेयर द प्रेजेंटेशन आई डू नॉट हैव एनी प्रेजेंटेशन टुडे सो ओके नो स्टिल आई हैव मेड यू द होस्ट ग्रेट ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू हेलो एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम जी नॉट कॉल मी मैम मुकुंद जी नमस्कार हेलो जगन्नाथ जी आई थिंक आप कुछ कहना चाह रहे हैं नहीं आई जस्ट सेड नमस्कार 
अच्छा ओके नमस्कार नमस्कार हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन हाय गुड आफ्टरनून सुनील शेल वी वेट फॉर कपल ऑफ मिनट्स इज एवरीवन अवेयर ऑफ द असाइनमेंट वी डिस्कस्ड या बैरियर किस टुडे एंड अनदर वाज आई थिंक ई एंड वाई ई एंड वाई या यस या So we'll discuss that first. We'll give around twenty to thirty minutes for that discussion, and then I'll share something from the last chapter. Mainly, we'll discuss PNP and succession planning. These two things. Since we are going to do that activity in groups, I hope you have already coordinated with your group and ready with your presentation. Yes. Okay. This is waiting for Chandru ji also to join. Okay, sure. Yeah, because in our group, Chandru Chandru ji has made the presentation. Uh huh. So, Advani ji, right? Can wait for a couple of minutes. Uh huh. Sure. If you guys have any group, you can probably put that in group. that we are waiting for others to join please let me know when you are ready so is there any collaboration happened um, all of you connected as group and discuss what do you want to present what is there in the group what what is that you want to highlight from the uh, case Did with respect to the ENY case, yeah, we we were I think five of us in the group, so we made a smaller group on WhatsApp. Uh huh. And, you know, since Chand Chandruji is you know out of country, so we shared our inputs on WhatsApp, and uh, he collated and made a PPT on it. Okay. <laughs> This is actually a very odd timing for him for the classes, but yeah, it's his. dedication for the course what about the another group jagana ji is your group ready uh, sorry to say uh, i could not connect with uh, uh, Vishwadeep, uh, Daisy, Deepu, and Kavya. Uh, if they have prepared anything, uh, let them uh, do it. Uh, very sorry to say, but I was uh, not pro uh, in good health, so I could not uh, monitor and all that. Sorry for that. Okay. So, is there anybody else who has worked on that case? or did you individually uh, read the case all of you i had read already early, uh -huh. earlier but uh, i don't know about maybe they must have read 
others can i hear it from you deepu last time i was not present here a biswadeep is there deepu is also there now mm -hmm. and uh, i think uh, who else daisy and uh, kavya they are not uh, seen uh, present okay. but maybe vishwadeep and uh, deepu may uh, continue thank you okay so looks like in whatever age we attend classes we become real students right <laughs> so assignments are not done or the class presentations are not ready but uh, not entitled for any punishment also murga ban jao aur wo sab nahi hoga nahi wo sab nahi hoga wo sab nahi hoga wahi problem hai wo sab nahi ho payega yahi problem wahi problem hai aur online hone ki wajah se that is the advantage no and even for adult learners i don't think that approach will work whatever we could have done school days and even for my mba students i could have never done this anyways so if any group is ready you want to talk about it that's fine otherwise it is already an assignment for all of you i have already shared that assignment with sarita i'm not sure if she has already shared that with you or but uh, you are uh you know all of you are supposed to work on both the cases as two two questions should be there in the assignment so i have given two uh these two cases to all of you uh to work on that the first thing is that you have to write the summary of the case and then whatever respective questions are given there you can respond to those uh so if you have not done it for class presentation you are you definitely have to do it for Uh, uh madam i think for marriott uh, there were no questions as such uh, after the case study no it was only uh, total rewards action planning and that's it uh for marriott's case no questions were put uh, had you given in the chap in the chapter there are few questions to ponder yeah questions to ponder is there but it is mentioned but they, those are the general questions they are not uh directly related to marriott just they have mentioned talent management and okay. how is it is full explain drivers uh, strategies yeah, uh, yeah I, and uh, I, right 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 i know that but uh, taking uh, the you know the consideration of that case you can respond okay, to those okay. questions yeah oh i see okay yeah. because everything what we have given as questions also is something which is covered in that that case and in eny case Uh, the direct questions are given yeah onam ji if you are referring to the formal assignments no we haven't heard from uh, istd yet okay maybe they will they will share that yeah, maybe it's in progress yeah ha uh ha -huh. so maybe they are collecting from all the faculty then at one stretch they will share uh, all the subjects questions Right. Yeah. No, we are yet to come out of shock of uh, last uh, term's assignment marks. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So those were uh, good marks or bad bad marks. No, I said shock, na. So definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so let's let's start the discussion. Whoever is here, if you are not ready for the, um, and I think Lavanya and group is ready, but since uh, the PPT is not there and you don't do not have the leader from the group, uh, you may not. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, this is Bishwadeep. Yeah. Bishwadeep. Uh, actually, uh, sorry, madam. Actually, I could not uh, prepare that uh, assignment due to the uh, budget meeting and all. so uh, i hope but uh, if possible uh, can we get some other uh, another uh, opportunity to present this some no, other this is vishwadeep ji this is our last class uh, yes. the contact class is last and after that uh, you will get some assignments from uh, office diploma oh. office they'll share that with you and these are the same two um, cases which i have given as the as assignment as well Okay. 
you anyways have to I, I just can initiate to... the discussion of Marriott if you permit, uh, so that we can take it. And Poonam ji, we also have the PPT of ENY. So once Jagannath ji is done, we can proceed with ENY. So okay, you got it from Advani ji? Yeah, Poonam yeah. It's on, it is on the group only. It is in the group only. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so whoever wants yes, to talk, let's have at least people who are here, they can contribute and they can also share their point of view on that. If they have read, if they haven't, uh, then also they can listen to others. So let's let's go ahead and do let that. Let us prefer the young then, Ernst and Young. Preference be for young. <laughs> Ian Y case? Yeah, obviously, because the presentation is ready. Huh? So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Lavanya? Uh... Sure, I'll share the screen. Yeah. Do you have oh, rights? No, I don't have the yeah. rights. I think I have to give you rights. Okay. To share. And how will that happen? Because from training, uh, from ISTD, somebody has given me, right? This there is host from ISTD. I don't know if this person is active or not. Yeah, that's what. But let me see if I can do that. Uh, Lavanya, no? Lavanya. No, I can only pin. I can't. But Poonam ji, you can't because you don't even have the host. You have co-host for rights, no? So you can't do it. Hmm. Is there anybody from ISTD? By I used to be member. No, <laughs> all the members are here. I'm talking about the office. Somebody is from the office. Somebody has logged in, right? As host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm mentioning. Somebody host who is there, he, he or she can only give us the access. Yeah, that's what. That's what, Angela. Uh, yeah. I don't think whoever is there, they are actually active. Okay, in that I case, I can just start the discussion. Yeah. Right, right. You can just talk about it. Okay, so uh, we made some four to five slides, and uh, we thought the ENY case study. Um, you know, was a very, very unique framework because it talks about, you know, three three unique pillars. They have incorporated learning experiences and uh, coaching as a part of, uh, you know, building a better working world. I mean, that's their mission. So I think um, what the ENY case study uh, really emphasizes on is how together you know, when this uh, development plan works, it works on mutual commitment between the employee as well as the organization. Um, so the whole thing is based on that and also how the individual gaps are also identified, uh, you know, using the competencies uh, that are. Yes. Is there anybody from ISTD? You have unmuted yourself. Please check, ma'am. You are the host. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can I can make you co-host. In that case, you can share the PPT, Lavanya. If I make you co-host, I think so. Otherwise, you can uh, do one uh, setting. Yeah. If you go in the uh, Screen sharing I, option. You can allow everyone to share the screen. Yeah, I, I gave it to Lavanya now. Lavanya, can you please check one? Yes. Yeah, she can do that. Wow. You can see, right? Yes, I can see that. I hope everybody can see. Yes, it is visible. 
Yeah, so this is what we were talking about, the unique talent development plan by ENY, where there is mutual commitment between employee and organization and how very collaboratively uh, uh, this approach has been designed. And the three pillars that we spoke about, uh, it uh, talks about learning, it talks about employees' experiences as well as coaching by the organization and the leadership team. Okay. So I think what we inferred from uh, this whole uh, ENY study was the fact that a um, few things that, that came up was uh, under learning, the techniques that they used, you know, customized training, or it could have been the instructor-led training or online or technical. So all these were part of the techniques that they used in order to aid the learning of the employees and which obviously will, over a period of time, build and change the culture of the organization. And uh, in terms of the second pillar, experiences, uh, a very important pillar. So here, uh, it speaks about nine high impact experiences. For example, you know, job related specific experiences or role wise experiences, delivery quality services, there's accountability, there's also, you know, like coaching, it could be train the trainer, some, you know, corporate social responsibilities or mobility, which is also, uh, you know, flexibility. Then they're talking about leading changes, recruiting, building a professional brand and all that. And moving on to the third pillar, which is nothing but coaching. Now here, the leadership team comes into the picture where they're trying to share guidelines and coach have meaningful constructive conversations uh, with the employee so everybody is involved in this and there is transparency also they're talking about cost effective and uh, you know global next gen where there's collaboration with global and probably indian leadership teams um, global networking etc what happens is you know eny is slowly building a global mindset as well amongst its employees trying to foster uh, creativity, innovation or diversity, et cetera. Now there's also succession planning happening simultaneously uh, through this uh, unique framework because succession planning basically helps uh, with you know, the sustainability part and long-term success obviously of the organization. So I think by identifying um, you know, and nurturing the the people, the potential uh, employees as future leaders from within the organization, ENY is actually trying to ensure that there is continuity in leadership. And, you know, there is also some sort of competitive edge that is kind of maintained in the market. Okay. And uh, they're also looking at future ready talent where they're talking about, you know, how to prepare the employees for future roles and leadership positions. Um, going back to the trio meeting, which is basically showcasing, uh, you know, the forward thinking approach. And uh, this happens to be, I think, a very proactive approach and also equipped with uh, whatever necessary competencies and skills that are required for, uh, you know, um, contributing effectively to the organization's success. So that was that. And uh, I think in terms of just to emphasize on um, the culture piece, uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, it, it it shows when there is a change, right? Because the employees are delivering, you know, high quality training and uh, uh, effective learning that is taking place. Uh, and so, so this kind of approach, I think basically leverages a very um, deep understanding of the company's culture where you make the learning both relevant as well as uh, impactful. So this is about, I'm trying to like tell you whatever I remember because I had not really prepared for the presentation. Uh, but yes, we had shared uh, inputs, etc. So ultimately in terms of uh, summary, we believe that uh, uh, ENY's you know, uh, framework, which is so unique, it actually provides um, a structured and meaningful approach to the employee development. Uh, again, going back to building a better working world. 
right now uh, we also believe that the framework is designed to sort of understand both the employees as well as the organization's culture better develop uh, uh, their talent in a more you know structured way and obviously prepare them for the uh, you know future uh, using the uh, techniques and methodologies that we just spoke about and they also focus on you know learning um, hands on experiences there and then coaching so the, the three pillars that we spoke about so i think what's happening here is eny not only ensures that its employees excelling in the current role but also they getting sort of groomed uh, simultaneously for the future roles so basically the summary what we thought was it's a holistic approach to uh, the employee talent development again reinforcing uh, the company's commitment to nurture the potential and also enabling the organization to serve the customers and the employees uh, better and also to achieve its uh, mission and vision those are the last slide. I'm just going to stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Lavanya. Anybody wants to add anything here? Andrela was also part of the group, so she can... Yeah, Andrela, please. If you want to add anything. I think Andrela cannot yes, hear. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Lavanya has mentioned nicely... Uh, the main thing is that they have emphasized more on uh, uh, building employees learning uh, I mean learning future so that they can grow they can be grown uh, grow in a better way and they can be uh, makes the leadership uh, they can be uh, I mean make ready for the leadership level that is their their emphasis uh, they have given emphasis on the learning phase that is the most important thing I mean for retention, they have chosen learning over everything. Right, right. Thanks. Thanks for that, Angela. Yeah, so as we can see, the focus is mainly on developing talent internally. So every time when you... Um, and it it all starts from the war for talent, right? And war for talent was a phenomena probably in 2001 or so. But now, again, if you see the scenario in the market right now, there are various roles and especially these technology roles where, you know, organizations are continuously um, fighting for the right talent and that war for talent is still there. Uh, especially the roles in the data analytics field and all that, like last time we were discussing about that. Everyone is just posting for those roles, but you don't get the right talent for that. So in that case, how are you developing your internal employees, right? So it is not that whoever you're hiring from outside for these roles, um, they are the people who have recently gone through those degrees and all. They are also upgrading themselves, right? They are, they are there in the market for a long time, especially if you talk about senior roles and people who are having already 15 to 20 years of experience. So it... it it's not that they are coming from the colleges right now with this kind of, because the curriculum is changed, because this is a requirement now, and that's where uh, universities are teaching this. Not because of that. They are upgrading themselves continuously. So in that case, if they are up upskilling themselves externally, and then you hire them, why can't you apply the same formula on your employees? So what do you have to... Um, have some patience, you have to develop some, you know, design like you see ENY has done. And then you can, uh, similar way, you can also build the talent rather than every time buying the talent. And that's, that is the uh, basic difference we say. Andrila, you have unmuted yourself. Do you want to share anything? Yeah, I just would like to mention a single thing. Like whenever we are grooming our talent in the organization, there is always two things uh, positives uh, in on positive sides. One, they are very much culture fit with these organizations, and then costing is very much taken care of when we are grooming our people rather than buying from outside. Right. Right. Yeah, and then organizations generally they they are not able to foresee that cost saving. They don't understand where exactly it is coming from. Yes, Lavanya, you have raised your hand. Please go ahead. 
I just wanted to share one example, which uh, for one of the organizations which we implemented, you know, so there were no competencies. Mm -hmm. so we actually established the entire competency framework for one of the, uh, um, you know, insurance companies. So we divided that. I don't know if it's helpful. I'm just sharing. Mm -hmm. We did the whole process into three steps because the company itself did not have competencies while the mission, purpose, vision, everything was kind of there. But we didn't know, you know, the core competencies of the organizations because that is what is going to run across the organization. Right. So first we arrived at that and then eventually we, um, I, I remember there were some 18 to 20 departments and all of them were like mostly important, including HR. So we did, we arrived at functional competencies as a second part of the exercise. And uh, once that was established, uh, we did, uh, you know, role-wise, uh, um, uh, you know, competencies but if obviously you can't do it for 5000 or 10000 employees uh, it's it's not it's an impossible task so we identified critical role holders jaha pe wo roles overlap hote hain na jo match hote hain so we mm -hmm. took them as samples and uh, we completed that whole exercise now when you do this uh Obviously, we had an external facilitator because we had to use all the other tools like BEI or 360 degree or, um, you know, case studies from Harvard, etc. blah, blah, blah. So this we can't develop internally. So mm -hmm. obviously, you go to an external facilitator and we had them uh, sort of intervene at some point. Uh, one for the buy-in, uh, two from the leadership team, and two also for the fact that, you know, Obviously, you don't keep these tools in your organization. These are like one-time activity stuff. Right, right. So you pay for it and then you go about it. So after having done all this, I think uh, one smart thing that we did was in we when we were building the PMS strategy, we said 10% as a pilot, we said 10% of these competencies will be included in your KRA. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, um, so that, you know, I mean, obviously it is kind of objective at some point because your manager is only kind of appraising you, but still kind of to incorporate, you know, and retrade the mission purpose, etc. Uh, I thought it was a good start. Mm -hmm. um, and with this succession planning also happened and we were able to identify high pots because you're also developing the IDPs, right? So correct, correct. out of which the outcome comes and then you can go about it. So I just remember that example that we did. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think this whole exercise is talent management, what you have just shared. And then um, the thing is, uh, if, if organization, and that's a very basic requirement, having, um, you know, your competency model framework ready with you, it is a basic requirement for the organization to do all the other HR activities, so-called HR activities, they say. Uh, but organizations mostly don't understand that. They hire, they hire without having a competency model with them. Like, uh, you know, at what level you're hiring them and what is the skill level right now? What is the actual requirement for that? How your organization has grown from a certain level of competency to the next level of competency? How do you, how do you just want to discard the you know, maybe first or second level of your competency, then you, 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 you and your organization um, is growing in such a way where you are moving to the next level. And that's where your expectation from the um, talent is increasing. But if all that is not in place, uh, you just hire randomly. And when you hire randomly, then uh, all other plans, let it be about their development, because we don't know if we are designing as a, you know, as a training experts, if I may call all of you, if you need to design a program, who should be the audience? And most of the time in organizations, what are we doing? We just design the program, we have a program open, we just invite participant to join that program. And somebody is like in, you know, in classrooms or if you see that JE model and all where uh, FITG and all where they prepare students, they know that, that you have to keep certain students uh, in one section because they are already on a certain level. And then you have to keep other students in the, in, in the other classroom, other section because they still need more help or maybe more handholding or so. So similarly with employees, if 
you don't do that segregation if you don't work on that and segregation you can't like this is not class you can't say okay you are a little weak and that's why i'm putting you in the in this section right they are your employees but you have to have a very clear model that okay this is a competency framework your competencies are still fitting into this level and that's why to reach to the next level you have to go through these programs all that so the exercise which is starting from the hrbp's work so business partners have to look into competency model and all will help the lnd team right otherwise uh, business itself or managers or line managers are having certain frameworks in their mind they are using that and without any uh, you know any structured or strategic planning everybody is going through certain training program so what we see here in anmy model how beautifully they have decided that everything they are going to put in these three pillars and then who should be part of which uh, pillar and how that particular pillar is going to help a certain group of employees uh, that's design i'm happy to see that i at least in my previous organization um, i have done that with my employees okay so anyone anyone else has any other thought on this same case any insights you have got now after her presentation yes please this is our last interaction so one more uh, point about this uh, and by they have mentioned that about the impossible dream that is today's interns uh, tomorrow's mm -hmm. leaders actually like, the mm -hmm. same thing happened with the marriott also uh, mm -hmm. that the uh, leadership pipeline what we are talking right. about right right or talent pipeline uh, to develop within the organization it will facilitate in the two ways uh, people will feel a sense of belonging about the organization number one they know the ins and outs of the organization after working for so many years with uh, the organization and so they will be in a better position to take good care of the organization so that is very important is whether uh, uh, you hire people from outside uh, and uh, put them directly in the top positions or whether you are promoting your own employees so hmm. this is also wonderful thing about e and y i want to mention thank you right thanks thanks jagannath ji and i think andrela already mentioned about e and y uh, like this point in this case um, how it is not just motivating employees uh, but also facilitating organization so knowingly or unknowingly because what happens you know uh, leaders or teams are changing continuously in organization so they don't understand every everybody will not understand the value of uh, people who are in the same organization for long time so they know in and out see everything has positives and negatives you can again say that people who are there they become complacent they don't want to change easily so things become difficult for the organization that that is also a fact but at the end of the day if you are able to build that learning culture in your organization if you are uh, a learning organization itself then uh, since starting they understand what, what is the value of learning and where where can they reach someday like right? what will be the career growth by by all these activities otherwise if you are doing it for the sake of doing employees are very very smart they know everything they understand everything um i think last time also i shared that what your leader is doing how are how much they are uh, putting their time in learning or learning something new everything is what your employees are observing so don't think that you don't want to learn anything you don't want to um you know um you don't want to um upgrade yourself or upskill yourself and you just want to force your directs or your employees that will not work right but definitely that motivation is one thing another thing is it's a win win situation for organization as well as and i have let me tell you one thing i have personally seen uh leaders in the organization who are scared of training their employees or their team members because they think uh if they learn these new skill sets 
they will leave, they'll find out another job. What do you say about that? That they'll be replaced, right? That's what you mean. Yeah, that also happens, madam, in case of uh, if the people are, uh, we can use the word narrow-minded, uh, mm -hmm. then definitely this can happen. They will not allow uh, their subordinates to grow, their subordinates to know and grow uh, further uh, because they are uh, worried about or they are they feel insecure about their own positions, whatever they have created. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, this uh, was uh, seen in the pre-computer era uh, when the computers were not there and people uh, used to acquire that expertise. Uh, even I have observed uh, such kind of things. After computer and open uh, knowledge, open information, now these uh, things are now slowly bidding out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's precisely why we need to have a talent management vertical that is unbiased. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay, fine. So, uh, Advani ji, you have also joined. Do you want to share anything about TNY case? Though Lavanya has already presented it and very well presented. And if you have created the slides, beautifully done. Thanks. Congratulations for that. Uh, do you want to share any thoughts? No, ma'am. Sorry, unfortunately, I just joined late. <laughs> because of the time, it's kind of... Tough, you know, I so, but I yeah, no, but I I am pretty confident she did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. Okay, fine. So, can we have some quick discussion about the married case as well? Quite sim, quite a similar things. Uh, I I will initiate the discussion and then others will join for it. Uh, sure, sure. The only knowledge. difference is whereas ENY case only has their talent development strategies mentioned what exactly they are doing in the field of talent development. Um, married case covers the whole perspective of talent management. So that is the main difference. Right. Yeah, please go ahead and talk yeah. about challenges. Uh, on the personal note, this is the best case. or I like this case very much uh, among the, the study material, whole study material of talent management. That is the JW Marriott case. I always ask people, what do you do for living? And uh, how they answer that, uh, indicates as to how they are engaged or whether they are engaged with the organization or not. If the person says, I work in organization or if the person says, I work for the organization. So this all makes difference according to me, this is what I feel. And uh, when we are talking about the people factor, uh, it is especially much more important when your business is serving the other people. So you need to take care of your people so that uh, they will take care of your people, your customers. And this is what the crux of this uh, study, uh, case study. It is mentioned at the beginning only. When you take good care of your people, they will take good care of the customers. The customers will come back and the business will take care of it itself. Uh, we can also say that uh, when an organization takes care of line at the bottom, that is the grassroots employees or operational employees, that line at the bottom will take care of the organization's bottom line. That is the net profits. And exactly that has happened in case of JW Marriott. It is occupying almost one third of the globe. 71 countries out of 238 countries across the globe, the Marriott has its presence. And uh, the most important thing that they have done is they have taken care of their people. They have looked for their work-life balance. They have given them the much more leisure time. Uh, Marriott was the pioneer in starting five days a week, where it was not uh, of the practice in case of hotel industry. They have started the, the concept of associates. They don't call their employees as workers or employees. They call them as associates. They have even uh, tried to tie the family time with work style. Means they will allow their families to stay in the hotels and give feedback so that it will be genuine feedback and it will be uh, much more uh, empowering the people also, employees also. They have the strategy of stay, stay, say and strive. And that is the basic at the, whether people feel engaged, engaged with the organization or not. They should feel that this is my organization. I am not working in that organization, but I work for that organization. This is my organization. They own it. And this ownership or the sense of belonging is what the makes whole difference about the employee engagement. This is what my 
in short about the uh, uh, JW Marriott case. Thank you. Others may please contribute. Thank you. Thank you, Jagannath ji. Any, anybody else, if you have gone through the case, you can probably contribute. Otherwise, I think he has pretty much covered everything. And whatever we have read so far from uh, about talent management, um, JW Marriott is doing it in practice, basically. So rather than just putting it on paper, they have created, and of course, it's an old model. It's an old case. Uh, they were doing it for a long time. Um, after COVID, I'm also not really sure how much the practices are in place. But yes, they were definitely the trend makers if we talk about past. Okay, so um, as I already said, both of the cases are given in assignment. So you can uh, read them write the summary of the case, and then respond to the questions given in that chapter, right? So that that is something uh, will help you understand more about the case as well as the concepts given in these chapters. Okay, so let me now quickly touch upon, if anybody else has any thoughts on about the cases, please go ahead, or I will just quickly touch upon the last chapter. There are a few other you know, TM essentials as given in the book. Okay, I take it as no. Uh, so I think we, we already, uh, here and there, we talked about the performance and potential metrics, also called nine box model. And most of the organizations are using it for developing the competency framework and later, you know, aligning all their other functions with um, with this model and with the competency mapping. Uh, the main purpose of having this model, I believe, is always doing the justice with the employees. And that is only possible if you, you have the data for both the points, right? So most of the time, organizations keep it, keeping it very simple. Uh, they just go with line manager's verdict, whatever they feel uh, about their directs, about their employees, uh, they appraise them or they evaluate them based on that information. It's not very objective, but the practice should be very objective. But when we talk about performance appraisal, of course, it cannot be completely objective business, but how we can make it more and more objective, that should be the approach for the organizations. And for, to fulfill that approach or to achieve that place, organizations, uh, most of the organizations take help of uh, this nine box model and are able to categorize their employees in different, you know, uh, different boxes, able to put them in different boxes. And that's how the appraisal or the real performance evaluation can happen and based on that, you can plan your talent development, you can plan your talent retention, who should be um, part of your longer journey, and you can also plan for your succession plan, right? So uh, if all of you have books, please, you can see that model in the book. Uh, the reason I'm not able to share my um, PPT or you know my screen this time but I am in a transition right now. I'm in a movement. So I was, I'm, I shifted from Bangalore to Hyderabad. So still, I do not, and I am also in the transition of job. So I handed over everything to my prior organization. And now I'm just, you know, managing with whatever I have right now uh, to use. Yes, Jagannath ji and Advani ji, both of you have uh, read. You are, making, you are making mention of page number 94, right? Nine boxes, model, the Yes, so the whole chapter, 90, 91, 92. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, typ no, yeah. Typically, yeah. I have the question about these nine boxes for him. Uh -huh. uh, they have made the uh, this quadrant, no? high potential, uh, potential and performance. Uh, yes, high yes. High, medium, low, and uh, under effective and uh, outstanding performance. And uh, yeah. the boxes, uh, they have mentioned, I didn't get the why the sequence is like that. Box one is. So if you're talking about if you're talking about page number 94, 
that is yeah. part of that is part of uh, this exercise like uh, the whole case you can say right Potential which is given how control. it is yeah how it is done so that particular box mm -hmm. is part of their exercise okay mm -hmm. example which is given the uh, how how it how it is done practically so that is for that okay and and as far as the boxes are concerned so it can be uh, you know it is all your model so you can start from uh, the right extreme right or or you can start from the uh, the left left corner okay yeah in advantage. that itself i am not able to get actually as to how the sequence is made like say for example high potential and outstanding performance is box 1 uh -huh. high potential and effective performance is box 2 yes and uh, medium potential and outstanding performance is box 3 yes and then uh, both sorry low potential and outstanding performance is box 4 means it is in what hierarchy it is a uh, Depending on the performance or potential? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. We'll come to that. Ah, right? Okay. Yeah. So once you understand the basic model, which is given here, you know, on page number 92, then you know why they have put it here like that. Okay? Yeah, Advani ji, you have also raised your hand. Please go ahead, tell me. Yeah, Poonam ji, namaste. Namaste. So, yes, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to request you. I I just overheard you saying that you are in transition yourself, and we completely understand that part. And I know that all your stuff has been given to the previous organization. Is just a request: is if you are able to still provide us with the PPTs and your recordings, that will be really amazing. Recording of of all the sessions that we have been conducting recording of all the sessions is something ISTD should have i do not have the access to that uh, i am sorry who is this who's this asking is, uh, this question advani advani uh last week only i posted everything in your group why are you asking this question to ma'am i have been checking the link and i didn't see anything that's why I was... no no so all the recordings which are there on youtube the links have been posted even today if you go to youtube you'll find all the classes Okay, so if you don't mind, just can you please uh, send me the fresh It's link. there in the group. Please check it in the group. And this okay. class, I will send it on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Okay. And the other PPTs? PPT, whatever I've received has been uploaded. I see. Okay. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah, thanks. It. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the response. Uh, so, and as well as uh, PPT is concerned, uh, of course, whatever I shared earlier uh, with Sarita, that was not the complete work, but that is my work. Like my laptop is submitted to the pre previous organization, but everything is available online. So once I have the access to another laptop, I'll be able to share the updated one. I'll share again with Sarita and then you can always get it from there. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And as I always say that everything in a very lucid manner is given in the book. So you can always go through the book and learn from there. What I put in PPT is mostly the models so that we can discuss around those models. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So let's come back to this. Uh, so when we are talking about, you know, um, this performance and potential models, the simple logic is, that you, if you want to evaluate somebody or if you want to see somebody's performance, uh, performance that can only be based on the past, right? So if you're going with somebody's performance and you want to um, evaluate that person, you want to take any decision about their career growth or about the, uh, their career progression or the further actions in, in terms of their employment, that is only based on the past performance. And in past, there are always possibilities of shining or may not be um, having that very, you know, um, exhaling time because um, there can be various different reasons, right? So probably you, are, you were a very good performer in your quarter one, uh, but something happened in quarter two and the performance goes down so there, there is always possibility of external factors as well um, 
how, however great you are as employee, there's a possibility of having uh, something like COVID or something like demonetization, right? And then your performance uh, goes down. So you cannot always rely on performance. So GE thought about it. And the first time this model was used there, it was developed there uh, in GE. Uh, they said, we ha also have to look for the potential of the person, right? So I think in very first class, Sunil was uh, talking about PNP model. So this is that PNP model. So you also have to look for the potential and to know the potential, the role of manager increases, the role of line manager increases. You just can't go with the numbers. You just can't say uh, this was the target for the employee and the target is achieved, so performance is high. The target is not achieved, so performance is low. It's very simple. But when you have to see the potential of somebody, you have to know your team members, you have to know your directs very closely. You have to, you know, you, that close association of manager and employees will be there to find out about the potential. Potential is not something which you can, uh, you can, you can find out without knowing somebody, right? How, how do you know somebody's potential? Anybody? Are you getting my point? Are you there with me? Is there uh, any uh, mechanism or any kind of, uh, say, for example, psychometric test or something, uh, which if answered uh, uh, honestly, it can reveal that potential? And can you can you com go with that completely? No, not completely. But uh, many times the potential remains hidden, unless and until the person gets the opportunity to explore that potential. Many times it happens out of accident. Also, many times uh, it may be in a planned way as well. Uh, right. Many times depends on the uh, opportunities uh, being available for the employees to grow and uh, show their talent or show their potential. So that happens. Uh, what I feel uh, much more important about this quadrant is the dysfunctional genius, where the potential is high and performance is low. Yeah, right. yeah. we will talk. So, we will talk about it, Jagannathji. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We will come to but about the potential. That that is what I wanted to know. Ki whether uh, HR people have any such uh, mechanism or technique or something. Uh, and which will help where, them to know the potential. That's where I said. So you said there can be some psychometric test and all. We use yeah, that. Yeah. We use that for for freshers, right? Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. in, in the case in the case of uh, college placements and all, what do we do? We do, we have not seen their performance. You can probably see their performance in terms of their marks or their other achievements and so on. But how do you know uh -huh. that they'll be the right fit for your organization? So that fitment generally is. Um, is is found through these kind of psychometric tests and all, and there you find okay the potential of this person. When when we say you know mainly the aptitude, you try to find out, right? So ah, you, exactly aptitude. Yeah. yeah. You you see that aptitude is quite what is required to perform and perform this this kind of job, right? So yeah, you apart from that, apart from that, the basic qualification, whether it is educational qualification or technical qualification or, or that employees urge uh, for CPD, continuous professional development, that mm -hmm. will also help us to know his, his or her potential, right? Mm -hmm. we, very few employees we can find that they are engaged in CPD. Yes. They try to uh, uh, upgrade mm -hmm. themselves, upskill themselves. So that, right. that also can indicate the potential. Right? Right. So that's where Thank I you. see. So when you said about the uh, the you know the psychometric test and all that can work for somebody who is who is fresher who is joining who is just joining your organization so more 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 of uh, kind of guesswork you can say right but no in in about, case of even uh, confirmed employees as well that is no, what I'm, I'm coming I'm to that I'm coming to that but in okay, the okay. case of employees in the case of your you know your employees who are working with their managers. The involvement of manager is important. As you said, you know, the learning ability, the interest in learning, the uh, the interest in taking up something new, all that, who knows well? Who is in the close association of that em employee? Manager, right? So having that uh, eye from the manager side, 
who is doing what and who is uh, who who can do that better that is identifying the potential right so performance as i said performance is very clear thing whatever you are doing in a particular given time uh, your your kr is were defined already and you have worked according according to that uh, your kpis were there and your you know your performance is um, as per your kpis and all so if you have achieved all that we can clearly say that the performance was good the performance was not good the performance was the average and so on. but potential at a certain level to identify potential the close association of line manager is more important than just having the any framework from the hr side right so even if hr provides that framework that framework will go to line manager line manager ultimately have to have that understanding of there and that's where the why why do we talk about the span why do we talk about uh, the span should be narrow not should be you know the broader span or so so on because as much uh, you work with your employees you are able to identify that uh, as a from the lens of 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 a manager right so uh, lots of involvement of managers will be there when we talk about these nine grid manager nine box grid okay um, things are very well explained here if you see you yes vishudi please go ahead uh go, madam i have a question uh, regarding the potentiality findings uh, at the time of interview is there any process or uh, any system to identify the candidates uh, potentiality and that's what we do in interviews right so in the process of interview in the process of having some uh, tests done so we were just talking about the pressures not just in the case of pressures organizations even have the um, the uh, psychometric test and um, other other kind of test for the um, lateral hires as well i think that is the whole process of um, hiring any employee should should have and even ha has all those elements which can gauge the potential because you you are not gazing performance there at all it it is the whole game of gazing the potential of the employee and and that is where you find out that how robust is your system to hire somebody then you always have the good hires and in the case of not having the right um right you know l1 l2 l3 uh, for for interview process for panelists and uh, uh, if you don't have the right test to be uh, used your hiring can be bad hiring because in the whole process of hiring you are just looking for the potential performance um is like even if somebody is claiming for a high performance earlier that there also you are just looking for the potential as a right employee for your organization right fit for for that role which you are offering to that person right so to be precise they have tests they have interview processes in interview we want the panelist to be trained uh, to hire somebody or to gauge that if the person is right fit or not Yes, Lavanya, you have raised your hand uh, madam uh, sorry uh, actually uh, whatever the process we have uh... Told that, uh, but this is the checking of the eligibility of the particular candidate to join the particular organization. But the competitive of uh, 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 the finding the talent or the uh, uh, efficiency, how it can be measured on that particular uh, interview time? Because time is very less. Okay. But if the person oh. is uh, is a person is the employee of the particular organization, there is a loss of scope of organization is getting or the HR person is getting to identify or to analysis his efficiency and the potentiality. But at the time of interview, there's a very small time uh, they're actually interacting. So mm -hmm. uh, in this particular very small period of time, how it can be measured actually? But if, if I go for the competitive of this potentiality uh, between the two or three uh, employees even mm -hmm. or the candidates, how it can be measured in that particular very small uh, time period? So time period, so the first thing is time period depends on the criticality of the role, right? Some roles, and as you said, we only see eligibility. No, we don't see only eligibility because if you want to see the eligibility, you can always just look at the uh, 
uh, you know, qualification certificates and you can say, okay, this candidate is eligible for this position. When we interview employees, when we do other kind of, you know, uh, uh, we use different tests or uh, the different levels of interviews are happening, like, you know, HR takes, HR tries to gaze something from their perspective. It can be about culture and so on. Uh, the technical team is trying to gaze uh, from their perspective to understand how much the technical uh, potential is there in that person and you know so so on like different levels at different levels different people are trying to find out the right potential find out finding out the right uh, the potential of that person which will be the right fit for your requirement right so it is not just knowing the eligibility it is more than that and how much time you are putting as you said probably you have some examples in your mind where the time is not given uh, to the uh, to the panelist okay maybe l1 l2 l3 whoever is there but the reason for that can be uh, the role might not be that important you know that uh, you know um, if the and many factors are there sometimes we only go to identify potential you only go where the person has worked earlier right if you talk about the technical companies uh, technology companies sorry uh, they will only see okay if you are coming to my organization were you working with my um, uh, with my competitor earlier and if you have worked there for few years if you have performed there that automatically becomes one uh, lens for the potential right so there are different ways of finding out the potential of someone to hire that will always go right not necessarily and that, that is the case where you even have the bad hires for your organization. Okay. Yeah, Lavanya. Yeah, I think you have something to share. I uh, Just to answer to uh, Biswadeep Ji, I think we can also introduce competency-based interviews. Yeah, so all those models. That's right. what I'm saying. So, yeah. yeah, so all uh, those models. Right? So what, what do you use? Uh, what frameworks you use in your right. interview processes, what frameworks you're using in your tests, what frameworks you're using in, you know, um, um, the screening itself, screening right. resume. So various ways. As I said, even if uh, you want to see where, where the person has worked, even if we see from which college you have passed out, right? All that is the lens for the potential, right? right. Isn't it? We just try to find, okay, somebody has somebody is coming from IIT. So what do you see? You already see that potential in that person that if that person can crack IIT, definitely, you know, something, something great is there in that person. And I can think of hiring this person. And at the end of the day, the process always go through the interview. So how much time you're giving an interview? It, that, that depends on the criticality of the position. If leaders are hired, you don't give half an hour time for that interview their interviews uh, don't happen the discussions happen right so those discussions can be of hours and hours of discussions with them so it depends on the role depends on the criticality of the role depends on the seniority of the role so on right Mr. Deep? I, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. yes madam yes uh, my question is uh, so I, I have never worked with nine box grid, uh, you know, as opposed to a 360 degree or uh, bell curve, etc. So I just want to understand, like, uh, does it work with all the verticals? Like all industries can implement nine, nine box. Second question, like, how do I know this is best for my organization? Like, what are the parameters or I don't know, what are the points that, that I think I should be considering to understand this is going to work for me, for my mm -hmm. organization? <laughs> see uh, first thing is uh, since you have worked with other models you probably and I think you are in the consulting spaces if I'm not wrong are you there uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm there I'm there I'm there I worked with the uh, product I worked with uh, uh, edutech I worked with IT <laughs> uh, no, I'm not talking about your clients I'm saying like I think you are in consulting spaces right yeah yeah, yeah. So uh, whatever models you have already worked, you know uh, how tedious it is, right? It is not easy work. Everybody from the organization uh, has to 
take the responsibility to actually implement that particular model. So similarly with the nine, nine grid also, it is not that it will only work for the smaller organization or bigger organization because bigger organization like GE itself introduced it and identifying uh, all these kind of employees in your organization, even in the smallest organization should be easy, should not be difficult. But the kind of involvement, the buy-in you were talking about from the leaders, right? That is required because here, and that's where I was emphasizing on that point again and again, that lots of involvement of line manager is required when you talk about the potential. Identifying performance or evaluating performance is very easy, but identifying potential is a work and especially a work for the um, for the uh, managers, right? How it should be done? If you'll go through this one, um, you know, 94, 95 pages where you can see that uh, for next two, three, page, uh, three pages, I think I have given some example of how um, some consultants have used it. But the aim is, uh, the process will definitely start with the competency model itself. Right. Until and unless that is clear with the organization. So it's it's all work in different steps. So you start with competency model, then you have a right uh, framework developed for your performance management system. And then uh, with the help of that data, you're able to put your employees here. So uh, it's it, you can say it's a cycle. So in one year, if you're performance management system is aligned with your competency mapping model. Uh, next year, you are able to collect the data for your uh, nine grade. And that will help you to plan for your uh, next cycle of appraisal, right? When we talk about the individual development plans and all, uh, that information will ultimately come from the nine grade model. How it will be have how it will happen? It will not happen across organization. Uh, it will always happen in in the uh, in different departments or different teams or so on. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um. And this, if you see, they have given the category like you know bad hires or um. Uh, dilemmas or grinders or uh, core players, dysfunctional genius and all. So this information is being collected from each and every team uh, or from the managers, right? So who are those there in their team? Yes, Vishuddhi. Uh, sorry, madam. Actually, I have to uh, something to share with you. Yeah, uh, uh, actually, what is really you have uh, just lastly you have said that uh, this uh, uh, regarding this uh, uh, selection of potentiality. Potential. Mm -hmm. uh, the, whatever you have discussed is a is a general process of identifying the potentiality. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, somehow I have seen actually I belong from a pharmaceuticals industry. Okay. So I have seen uh, most of the doctors I have uh, seen their academical uh, career is that was excellent excellent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when he is uh, in practicing mm -hmm. uh, the uh, patient profile is not too much not uh, not as good or uh, not uh, number of patients is not uh, that uh, that at part okay but, but the mediocre student uh, in the academic session but he has a very good uh, 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 clinical eye or the uh, diagnosis of a disease is very good mm -hmm. So uh, okay. I think, ma'am, this is a, uh, not always a sense from the which background he is coming from. This is the only way to identify their potentiality. Uh -huh. I think, ma'am, this is uh, my uh, uh, this understanding. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very much tough to uh, uh, identify uh, someone, pers some person's uh, just potentiality on the particular times, uh, just especially in this interview process. Uh, that's why actually I was asking that is, is there any other process to identifying that particular uh, identify, identification of that particular uh, potentiality of that particular candidates. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking about the hiring process, it does not mean only interview, right? Interview is that last, you know, that last, uh, uh, last action of yours, which should be stronger enough to 
find out who is the right fit for your organization. Okay. But there are a list of different activities. And as you said, uh, you rightly said that sometimes the academic performance is very high. But when you see the person has joined or in practice or working may not be that great. That is always possible. See, if we talk about this whole scenario of startups and all, initially, and there are lots of cases available about that as well. Initially, everybody was looking for, and especially these uh, startups were looking for all the IITs who have worked in the uh, you know uh, big fours kind of companies, so Deloitte, TNY, and all that. Later, they realize people who have worked in a very systematic approach, very systematic environment, they cannot fit in the startup culture because there nothing is, and why, why to talk about anyone else? I think I can give my own example. So from coming from a very established company and joining a startup, I have 10 months I was there and then finally I had to take a call to get into again a um, established organization, right? So, but given what I have done in my previous organization, starting l &D from scratch, even in the established organization, and you know, the kind of all the activities I did, the company will definitely think, wow, this is what can work for our, our organization, but may not work or may not work as well in the case uh, of the size of the organization and so on. Right. So that is always possible. If you see something, you try to uh, establish a certain kind of model around that. Okay, this is this is the college that person has uh, studied from. This is the kind of score that person has got. Uh, this is the kind of experience this person has. All that will be your, you know, your metrics for high, for looking for the right potential but may go wrong. That's what I said, right? And that's where bad hires happen. So may go wrong. But how strong is your uh, hiring team? How strong is the, uh, the knowledge of your panelist? That helps you to find out the right, right potential. But these are the models. These are the ways to hire the right person for your organization. Okay, there is no another magic. It is always about few objective methods and the uh, and going with the experience and expertise of your hiring team. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Jagannath, you have raised your hand. Uh, typically, top management talks about the texture of the organization. We are uh, discussing about the culture of the organization, but many times they talk about the texture as to how the organization is built and how it is moving how it is operating and so on and so forth. That also affects the HR policies of the organization, right? And mm -hmm. when we are talking about, say, uh, stars and uh, we are at one end and then bad hires on the other end, these can be the outliers also, right? Mm -hmm. These people having very good potential, maybe like we are saying, okay, oh, this person is good for nothing. Or uh, uh, from that stage, we can take him to the good for something. And then uh, ultimately, he can be good for anything, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, how that uh, texture of the organization, how that uh, setup of the organization affects these two things. Thank you. Yes, yes, you're right. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let's quickly come back to the model, PNP model. So uh, the aim of uh, talking about uh, uh, potential here was that the performance cannot be the only way to uh, to evaluate your employees for future for their career growth for, for especially for the succession succession planning right in succession planning i'll share uh, the model which i have actually I, I don't know if that is there in the book i let me just quickly see if that is there in the book i'll tell you to go through that page. If not, I'll share that with any one of you where probably you can No, I think that is not there in the book. Right, so in, in this model, generally um, 
generally what happens um we we are also able we are also um we are able to identify um what skill set this person has right and how how many hours of learning this person has spent in a particular year right um how much that person was able to take up uh, the other responsibilities which were not even part of his work so even if so as i said in in the case of performance if there is any intervention from the external environment right so external environment itself uh, creates the difficulty of achieving certain goals the performance may go down okay in that case what is that this person has done so we are not talking about new employees i am not talking about the hiring process here um uh, employees who are internally uh, with the organization who are working with the organization what is that they have done different so it can be in terms of their learning abilities how much they have learned in a particular given time uh, how much uh, they have contributed internally to the organization how much they even i have seen organizations even have in the, in the kras <laughs> in the kpis of somebody uh how many hours you have spent on mentoring uh, to your junior members right so all those things so it is not just about fulfilling the uh, the targets given to you what is that you have done beyond that uh, shows the potential part potential part in terms of uh, having senior leadership roles tomorrow right so mostly nine grid model um, is used and as i said if it's a big organization not possible that each and every manager will uh, have that kind of data available but especially for the senior level roles uh, this exercise is done in the organization so when when it comes to the succession plan for succession plan it is definitely one of the uh, one of the very important tool you can't use it for uh, for hiring purpose or so it is only used for the internal career progression so when we talk about internal career progression organizations focus will definitely be on on the succession planning part more so uh, for for the succession planning purpose you see uh, the potential part more potential part in terms of being the leader and having a leadership position what what are the skill sets you see in this person so what is the learning attitude and not sometimes it's not just about uh, what new courses you have taken up as leader sometimes it can be how many your team members have learned something new because of your encouragement because you push them to learn something new right so that's another potential seeing in you um, as a as a leader or as a senior member in the in the team right so all that comes in the uh, in the potential aspect <laughs> okay so what all comes in the potential aspect is a long exercise organizations make a huge list of that like we do in uh, competency mapping similarly here uh, there will be a, a there will be the list of skill sets which will be attached to each and every role and then we see uh, what is the potential in that uh, in in a particular person regarding these skill sets which are required for any role based on that and and again it is not the exercise which can be done with the uh, ta team it is the exercise which is done with the business partners and you know uh, the development team here we find out that there are few people who are low in in performance that's quite visible from their past performance and low in potential which is a data coming from the line managers or their uh, managers right based on that you find out these different nine categories of employees so you have stars who are whose potential is high so it's simply about uh, rating them on certain score right so if somebody is and since it's very objective so everything is based on the ratings so somebody's potential rating is 5 out of 5 and then even the performance that person's last last uh, last year performance is also you know 5 uh, out of 5 or 4.5 uh, 
uh, out of five or something like that. And they come under the star category. So the, the Jagannathji, to respond to your question now, um, when you talk about this box one, box two, box three, uh, box four, box five, box six, that is actually about the preference in terms of succession planning. Right? If you'll read through yeah, it. Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. So um person who is fitting into box number one, it should be your first prior preference in terms of the succession plan, right? Because that that is coming as the star. Your second preference can be uh, the high potential employee whose potential is high, but the performance was not that much. As I said, it can be 4.5 or 4 because you always have to consider those uh, those external factors or you know those and those conditions which are not are not in your control or so right so for that reason the high potential employee can be your second preference when we talk about the third one that is the high the high performer and here jagannathji what few mistakes you found in my book is one of that i think t is given there it is not high performance. It is high high performance. So high potential should be your second preference. But high performers can be your third preference in terms of uh, developing them for the succession plan and so on. Right. So I, I hope that clarity is there now. Yeah, definitely. The clarity is there. I'm just trying to convince myself as to why uh, the performance is given the second priority. Right. Like, say, for example, in right. box one, uh, no, no. Uh, it's like for box two, we have not uh, given priority for performance, but we have given priority for potential. Potential. And like yes. you mentioned that uh, the performance may depend on the external factors which are beyond the control of the employee. That could be the reason. That is what I'm trying to convince myself. Then in the box three, uh, when we are giving it priority number three, uh, uh -huh. the person is having moderate potential and mm. uh, uh, high performance. So the same uh, criteria which we applied for box two, why yes. it can't be applied for box five as well? Because the person has high potential, but he's not uh, giving the performance. Maybe again, uh, we can give him the uh, mileage or we can give him the benefit of doubt about the external forces. That okay. is what I'm a little worried about. No, no, yeah. perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's let's talk about it. See, yeah. so why now? Why fourth preference is the high performers and not the high potential employees who is dysfunctional genius, right? That's your question. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, why it can be? Let let someone else talk about it, and then I'll. Even many times in practical scenario, we find that the person has performed very well, high performance, and uh, at times that can be the windfall also, isn't it? I mean, say for example, box four, if we take the work horses, there uh -huh. is no potential, but the high performance. So that, yeah. that can be allocated to windfall also, isn't it? That can be allocated to? Windfall means... Uh, uh -huh. Okay, profit. okay, yeah, yeah, windfall right. Windfall profit, like we are uh -huh. saying, no, so... Why uh, it is giving more priority than the potential people? Means, uh, see, when we are talking about the talent management, definitely the talent uh, is uh, what we can say hidden in the potential, right? Mm -hmm. That should be the, our basic uh, premise for uh, when we are talking about the talent management. So, why, mm -hmm. why we are talking about that? Then, why potential doesn't get priority uh, over no. the performance? Potential. That is my Right, right. But if you see the model carefully, the potential is given the priority in the case of second, second, second box. Yeah, second right? is given. Why it is so? Why why it is so? Because the person is performing to certain level. Okay. Yeah. But hmm. beyond control factors can be there, and that's why you are made. You are you are trying to ignore uh, the low performance for a certain time period. Okay. But here, yeah. where we when we talk about the low performance, it means even after having the potential, this person mm. has not put in any efforts to perform. 
Okay, so that it, is the it, yes, it is always it is always possible that external factors are there, and you know you you tried your best, but you were not able to get the results completely. But it cannot be the zero result at all. So even in the case oh. if we talk about you know if if we talk about the scenario scenarios like COVID and uh, what what was the other example I was giving demonetization right. Even in those mm. cases, it was not that everybody was on zero. Like, okay. of course, there is a certain period of time when everything was zero. Forget about that. But in the long run, like if we talk about the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. So at uh, least some performance level increased. Why? Because the willingness to perform was also there. Right? Correct. Even okay. the conditions okay. were not in your favor. You, you were willing to perform and that's where you were able to give some result. But what is the what is wrong with this but, uh, fifth one? There the person has potential, but they're not interested to perform. And that's why we are not calling them zero, right? We are not putting them box nine. We are saying fifth, fifth box because they, put in, they have potential. And whereas they have potential, the responsibility of organization is to motivate them to perform better. Yeah, maybe like we have earlier on. mentioned. Uh, yeah, maybe like we have earlier mentioned about the psychological exit. Yes. The employees yes. with psychology. Maybe yes. that could be. Thank so you you have to identify it as as expert and then start working on their motivation part because they are not getting engaged with the organization. That psychological detachment has already started. So how can you work on that part? So it's not that they are completely of no use. They have potential, but there is something they are not performing. And then what is that you have to work on, right? So that is the end. People who are, even if they don't have potential, but are able to give you results, you should definitely have more regard for them. There is no question of ignoring somebody's direct and direct result. You can see that person is giving you direct results. So that is the reason why Workhorses are given priority over the dysfunctional genius, right? So you're a genius, but you decide not to work. And that's a, um, that's a dangerous situation for organization. Whereas people who are putting all their efforts without having that much of capability, then your, I think your l &D has a lot more work to do with that person, right? And that is the reason they are given that way. Okay, so I hope you are convinced with that, putting them into yeah, the yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I was uh, also, again, the talk, uh, thinking about the uh, figure number 7.2, where they have made the color uh, uh, color scheme applied. So maybe I will develop it a uh, little further and give the <laughs> other ah, uh, color. Okay, sure. thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, so uh, any, uh, any experience, madam, any Indian company has applied this for succession planning? Uh, do you have any uh, pharma citations? I, I have pharma companies who have applied. I'm sure okay. I must have given the references in the, in the references uh, itself. Because as I said, my whole PhD was all this. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, so okay. I think in references, it should be there. If it is not from the Indian uh, context, I will definitely share that with you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the other, other, other numbers you can see, and I think the clarity about the number is there to everyone, but uh, the grinders and the dilemma, again, uh, employees who do not have potential at all, but still continuously trying to perform better are the grinders, uh, but up, up or out, dilemmas are uh, who have potential but not performing at all are is still in that dilemma whether uh, they really want to upgrade themselves to perform better for this organization or not. So here in this case, uh, it is uh, not a very clear case of um, dysfunctional genius. Like they have full potential but still they don't want to perform at all. But uh, you have some doubt about their high potentiality as well, uh, but they have potential, uh, but they had definitely decided not to do a good job, right? And here you again, you also find your um, engagement aspect of your employees. 
So your employees um, who are engaged, who are disengaged, who are you know non-engaged with the organization, that information also comes. Uh, when we come to bad hires, we know uh, that's a completely wrong hire for your organization. You have definitely missed out on some uh, important aspects. If, if even if it is about the you know the kind of culture fit you wanted from that person, the kind of qualification you wanted from that person, and the kind of uh, performance you were expecting from that person. So everything has gone wrong. And again, the other decisions, like let it be about the development or about the coaching or counseling or mentoring kind of decisions, or taking up the seniority roles uh, in the organization, or even if we take the call about layoffs and all, everything can come from uh, these nine box, uh, nine box grid model. So, Lavanya, in my previous organization, just to address your uh, address to you, Lavanya, uh, yeah. we yeah. have in my previous organization, like previous to previous now, I can say, uh, WD, we were only using this model for our performance appraisal. So we did not even have any other kind of, uh, what do we say, the appraisal forms and all generally organized, the PMS, no PMS system we were using. We were only relying on this nine grid model uh, where whole information was coming from the managers directly. So organization- So means that there is no self-appraisal in this, no? It is only your reporting manager who appraises you. No, so it is on the basis of continuous interactions, continuous feedbacks, right? So when you are moving from those, uh, you know, bell curve and yearly appraisals or half yearly appraisals, so you want to become a very modern organization, you are completely moving to this. And when you are giving lots of freedom to your line managers and their, you know, their employees, the kind of repo they build, the kind of uh, uh, continuous feedback, the continuous interactions, the regular staff meetings, all that, when you want to encourage all that and you want the reflection of all that in your um, um, in your yearly appraisals, then you definitely want to rely on uh, this model. Okay. But nice. madam, how, uh, how in that case, how you will, uh, how you are able to put them, put the employees in this, uh, I mean, based on only feedback, how you were able to put the employees in this nine grid model? Okay, what should be the other base to put anybody into these categories, Andrea? You tell me. Ma'am, if we are using BSC balance scorecard, in that case, we could we could have a rating uh, for the employees hmm. by performance rating. I mean, based on that, uh, we can put them in the nine grid model. So what happens in balance scorecard? You tell me. Balance scorecard, we are uh, rating the employees based on uh, the four criteria like uh, right. finance, right. customer. Yeah, yeah. So I know, yeah. yeah, I know the model why I'm asking you that. I'm saying ultimately, whatever said and done, ultimately, an employee's performance, who knows the best about that person? Whatever criteria you make, you can put it in for those four boxes, you can put it uh, in these nine boxes. Whatever model you use, who knows best about the employee? The reporting manager. The reporting manager, right? So rather than can pakarna hai na, aapko aise haag se ghuma ke pakadi hai ya seedhe seedhe pakadi. Fine. So organizations who who want to create a lengthy process to make it objective, they definitely want to go for all those models because the biggest problem if if we give all the power to line manager, the biggest problem is subjectivity, right? We we are scared of having the biased approach in appraisal. That's the only reason. But the new age organizations, the modern organizations, what do they say? That the employee is equally responsible for his or her, uh, you know, results. Right. So they are equally involved. It's not that manager is a dictator and manager only will decide. You have your voice. You can always raise your voice. So organizations who are always emphasizing on speaking up culture, uh, bring up your voice culture, 
they want to give that kind of freedom to managers where managers know their limits they can't go beyond certain things which are you know which are ethical which are right yes advani ji yes so just kind of echoing on what you just mentioned i just want to share my viewpoint on this mm -hmm. please uh, with what's going on with, with what's going on with our organization is uh, we have the same uh, uh, philosophy and we have the same uh, code of conduct so we basically have uh, the employees doing a self assessment mm -hmm. at the time when they are uh, work tenure and then after that you know in order for them to be coming back to work so every every 6 months we have a assessment and then after that once that's done the performance appraisal is issued to them on the lines of how they performed and what was the potential and giving them an indicator mm -hmm. as to how they can grow into the organization right right so, and then it also has this uh, similar nine box module you know mm -hmm. taking place and then of course you know it kind of just reflects on their performance at present so whether they were highly effective or whether they were effective or they need improvements everything mm -hmm. is there thank you Thanks. thank you for sharing that thank you uh, so anjali just to respond to you uh, this is this all depends on the transparency how transparent is the culture in the organization right if you um if if you do you if you have if you have not created that culture where employees can clearly talk about their rights and managers also know uh, their accountability they know if they are rating somebody and why should not why shouldn't they have that kind of communication why somebody should know uh, his or her performance or if he or she is coming under high potential but low performers or you know um stars or high performers uh, why they should not know about it and how can they know they can only know uh, 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 when they have those regular discussions with their manager right so if manager and employees do not have that open communication on regular basis there is no question of having any model basically right so whatever model we use ultimately it boils down to uh, to the open and regular conversations between the manager and the employee how it is so that somebody should know i got 3 rating out of 5 at the end of the year why it means both of them were not having that clear conversation right the manager and and the direct they were not having the clear clear converse, conversation about the um, performance that should be on the regular basis and that is where when you clearly say that i say this person is bad hire that person will also be convinced because that was the conversation happening uh, the whole year it is not something as a surprise coming up to you as an employee or to your manager as your manager yes jagannath ji if uh, you, these uh, allegations or not not allegations but these ratings if they are backed with the data then it is okay it is perfect the employee right. it is easy for the employee to be convinced ki right. okay i am a bad hire or i am a this thing or that mm -hmm. uh, while we introduced this kind of system maybe some 15 20 years ago then uh, uh -huh. while launching this system na the uh, person concerned hr person he, uh, he or she said ki this is the window for mm -hmm. the employee to peek mm -hmm. into as to how he is being appraised and mm -hmm. at that time i asked the question why window why not it is the door mm -hmm. uh, and at that time maybe rti was not there right to information act but uh, uh -huh. subsequently it was also enacted and then now it has become a door mm -hmm. if the whatever you rate the employees if, so if they are not uh, in a position to know at that time because it's a window and not door but mm -hmm. uh, out of uh, by uh, posting the application through rti the people do get it and mm -hmm. so it remains means uh, it is what we can say it is compulsorily open means uh, right. not follow right but right. it has become open appraisal uh, but anyway uh, looking at the indian scenario and other things uh, the uh, scope for improvement is very less that is what i feel thank you mm -hmm. 
Poonam? Yeah. yeah. Technical Lavender. question, actually. Is mm. there a HOD approval in this whole mechanism? Yes. So at least that level one, level two, level three should always be involved. Okay. Right. So it's so not final approval does happen at the leadership's end. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Those calibrations will always happen. So it is not that you are. So lots of power is given to manager and should be given to manager. Why? Because a very very clear explanation for that is who the person continuously working with uh, that employee, right? But it does not mean that it, it is a dictatorship. So it has a mechanism. It, it it still has all those layers to complete the work. Yes, Advani ji. Yeah, no, I was just going to share my uh, my experiences on this, um, answering to Lavanya's question. Mm -hmm. What mechanism we have in place, you know, is let's say, for example, if we have an employee who is underperforming, you know, but has the potential to grow. Okay. So we keep on having these conversation, you know, meaningful conversations with them. And we keep on kind of uh, keeping him motivated, keeping him into the loop as to what are the things that he needs to do in order to grow. Plus, uh, what are the things that he's not doing right? We bring it all to his attention. So it's all put in a paper and it's called the opportunity log. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the opportunity log can be for positives and the negatives both. It's not necessarily only for negatives. Okay. And then we also have something that's in case if that person does not show any uh, improvement or if there's any some serious issues that have uh, occurred, you know, due to an act of an employee, you know, uh, then we also kind of give them a verbal counseling. Okay. And then it is followed up with an action plan. So the action plan is where we normally lay, lay out everything that we need to do. And that includes what is needed from the employee's part, as well as what is required from the supervisor's part or the manager's part. Uh, in case if there is any, uh, you know, kind of miscommunication or misconceptions, those are cleared. And then based on that, we kind of, uh, at the end of the, at the term, we kind of put all of those documentations together and then we kind of, you know, rate the employee how, how effective he was or whether he has been underperforming. So we give him the ratings according to that. So just answering to Lavanya's question. Thank you. Bye. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I think all of you, if you get some time, I think we are already, you know, at 3.45. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you get some time, just uh, this practitioner's guide example, what I have given there, just go through it. Lavanya, especially from your perspective, because you want to understand it from the practical perspective and you know how you how it can be used for organization just look into this um i i'm sure i have the uh reference with me so i can share that with you uh, but this is how it can be done at the end of the day potential and performance rating is definitely coming from the manager manager is not alone taking that uh that calibration is happening with the leaders with the employee, employee self uh, appraisal is happening or self rating is also um, being done. Based on that, you get it. And then you can see on page 95, you can see how the grid is finally prepared, right? Performance and potential, how these nine, and they have the all from all the employees. So I think in this example, they have given 30, uh, 3,146 employees uh, performance score. Who is coming where can be seen in in the pivot tab table itself right so that's how organizations are actually doing it but randomly you can't give any rating to anybody there's lots of work which is being done by the managers right so with that i think we are done we are okay. Yeah, already at 346 so time is also over but i would again suggest go through the book read everything uh, written from a very practical perspective uh, only examples the models the way we use use it the way we do it uh, is given in the book so it should be very easy and you know easy to use as well for all of you not just not just for writing the book there are lots of performance management books available in the market to understand the uh, 
concepts or to understand the theory. Uh, the idea of having this book is to create as much as the practical, uh, the practice guide we can create for you. So you can go through the book, learn more from there. With that, it's all from my side. If you have anything, you can go ahead. I'll be joining the new company tomorrow. Uh, just a question about the assignment, that project, uh, not assignment, project Please. research and uh, that assignment. Uh, we need to uh, consult with you only, na, madam? For, for what? For your project? Project? No, I, I don't think so. For project, you don't need to... Uh, okay, but uh, suppose we want to discuss anything personally, is it possible? You you can, but I don't uh, think even I am that updated about uh, what's happening now uh, in terms of uh, the project. No, no, the subject, uh, subject related only. Subject related uh, to anything, anything you can, yeah. But I think so, your project uh, is more about uh, pipe training programs or some HRD practices, something like that is there. So not really updated about that, but anything about the subject, or anything in general you want to check with me, I'm on this. With prior appointment, I will talk to you. It's okay. You can always ping me and check. If, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jagannath. Okay. If that's all, you can... Thank you, Poonamji, for these wonderful sessions. Thank you, Lavanya. Thanks, everyone. Being part Thank of it. All the best. All the best. Yeah, very please. insightful sessions in uh, this world. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Angela. And uh, all the best to all of you for your final exams. And I'm sure you, I hope you have learned something, some, some value addition has happened in your knowledge uh, because of my classes. And with that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.